Alright guys, welcome back to the Vanquish VS410 Builders Kit series. Um, we're going to go ahead and put the links on, the shocks, the axles, the drive shafts, and then later in the video I'll put the wheels and tires on it and the body and do a final reveal of the body that I've chosen for this build. Um, I'm excited for it, you guys should be too. So we're going to start with the front upper link. Um, if you take the links in the instruction booklet and hold it up to whichever one it might be, which happens to be flimsy paper, is this one. It fits, fits its ships and we're going to run it into the machine. So I'm going to turn it upside down and this is the front. So this upper link is going over here and we're using a M3 by 20 screw. Hold it up to the instruction book to make sure you got the right one. We're going to slide this link in here. Make sure the hole's lined up. And try to run it through the hole. I haven't found an easy way to slide these in they get tight sometimes so we're gonna see if we can run it down with the drill and it went ahead and centered everything up so first link assembled or installed and then we are going to the front lowers now we've got to spin it this way it says um, and we will flip it upside down and the lowers are gonna go right here and again, we've got a M3 by 20 millimeter screw, two of them, and the front lower links. I've already assembled everything on the table to where it will go. These slide in a lot easier than the uppers did. And it's all a matter of getting it lined up and getting it through there. Alright, then we're going to run them down. Alright, then we've got the pan hard link, which I'm going to leave it upside down. Pan hard link is here. And we're using a M3 by 16 millimeter, which is this guy, I believe. Yes. So it's going to be set in from the front to back. I'm going to do it like this so that you can see. And pivot it back over this way. And then it gets a nylock nut. Now the fun part is to try to see if I can get on there and tighten that down with that bumper being installed. Hopefully you can see this, and I'm not going to be able to. Come in here with the hand tool, since it is at somewhat of a funky angle, and I don't want to strip the head out. Because if you've done that before, you know it's a pain in the butt to get it fixed. Doesn't have to be ignorantly tight, just enough. I'll put the bumper back on later. And then, front lowers, pan hard. Next page. Next page shows the front axle. So we're going to set the chassis aside, grab the front axle, and it's going to orient it the same way the instructions show. We got the drag link here and the tie rod. And these are actually supposed to be faced two different directions. So you want one sideways and one up and down. And I can't build it that way, so we're not doing it. We got a M3 by 25, which 
which is going to go through the knuckle on the passenger side. I like to try to start it just a little bit and then get this tie rod in here. Run the screw down into it, and then we will come in here and give her a tighten. Okay, now we've got this plastic spacer here that comes in the screw bag and we've got a M3 by 25 which is this guy and this tie rod will go in but you've got this spacer that goes down from the top into the spacer and then through the spacer into the tie rod. Just like that. Alright, sorry about that, the camera battery died. So, on the driver's side you've got this standoff that goes here to make up for the extra room. Now you've got a functioning axle, and the next step is to add the shocks. And on the last video, I told you guys wrong. I said the one with the standoff goes on the top. It actually goes on the bottom, um, and that's the side that faces the axle. And we are going to what is this? Goes inside, so the standoff will face the pumpkin on the other side, and then you've got these. M3 by 20 millimeter bolts, screws that will come through, screw in. Oh, my extra light just died too, so hopefully this isn't too dark. I don't know how the lighting is for y'all. So there's the front shocks assembled on the front axle. And the next step is to put it on the chassis. Um, not going to do that right now. I got to go charge this light back up so you can see. Otherwise, it's going to be hard for y'all to see everything. So I will be back when the camera's fully charged and the light is fully charged. All right, guys, we are back. Lights charged, cameras charged. Got a new microphone, hopefully everything sounds a lot better. Um, so, on the last video we got the shocks installed on the front axle. Um, we got the tie rod and the drag link. And then we've got this spacer in here that I was talking about last time. So now that we've got this assembled, we'll set it off to the side. We'll pull the chassis back. And we'll go to the front side. Which, to make it a little bit easier, I will, well, no, this should be fine. So, I don't know if you can see right here where the drive shaft hooks in, the, the hole. I've got it facing to the side. And that is so that I can get the front drive shaft uh, in. Front drive shaft transmission side. And again, there will be a link in the description on how these uh, drive shafts go together. Wasn't going to burn up another video making the same thing since they are identical. So we're just going to slide this over. Make sure that thing spins around. We will get the pin and the 2 millimeter or 2.0. We're going to dab some blue Loctite on here. 
So we're gonna put this on here is to help hold it because it's small parts and I got big fingers. And you just wanna slide it in, try to get it lined up and then screw it down. If I can get it to seat, got to give it a little bit of pressure. There it goes. Give it a little bit of torque, not too much. And then we will flip the chassis over. Move all the links out of the way. Make sure that the drive shaft is pulled up. I'm just going to take probably this 1.5 and set it here so that the well I say that I don't want the drive shaft to fall down like that it gets all up in the way all right so we'll do that then we'll bring the front uh, axle back in flip it upside down and we're gonna go in with the drive shaft pull this little spacer back out that I make shift and then we've got Remember this one's the upper and these are the lowers. So we've got the upper control arm. We'll mount up under here. All right, so we've got the three 16 millimeter screws and they are a 2.0 tip. So, well, this might be a little bit more difficult, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this axle over Slide this upper control arm in the mount. Get my hands all up in the way. And then you've got to slide it in like that. Get her screwed in. Just gotta kind of flap. <clears throat> Right, so the upper control arm is bolted in. Now we'll come back to the drive shaft. And we lost the slide piece. There it is. Why well, say that? Come back in. Slide this in. Keep it rolled forwards. And then we've got the lower control arms which go on either side next to the shocks. Go ahead and get these. These guys slid in here. And I'm gonna go back to the drill much faster, just a little bit noisier. All right. Then, if you spin it kind of back down I guess you've got this front mount right here for the pan hard and the link will sit on the front facing towards the front of it and it actually looks like that it might get a eight okay so it gets an 18 millimeter with a nut 18 is this longer guy so what you'll do is try to finesse everything out of the way because it's kind of tight but you'll go what you'll do is you'll try to finesse everything because it's kind of tight in here with how everything moves but you will get the screw through the eyelet and then Run the screw into through the axle. And then it's calling for a nut on the back side. Once you get that nice and tight, that is now the pan hard bar installed. And that's 
the front links and now we're gonna go do the front shocks. Try to get this opened up for you. And so it is a M3 by 20, which are these long boys here. And it's a 2.5 head. And if you take a look at the way that this shock mount is, it's thicker on this side than it does over here. So this is where you're gonna be screwing into. So we're gonna be going from the front to the back with the screws. And I always like to make sure that the bleeder screw looks out. It's the little things. So we'll set that one. Come over here and set this one and run the screws in. All right. Whoops. All right, and just like that, you've got the front axle installed. Drive shaft is connected and installed. Then the next step would be to have the servo in here and go ahead and get the drag link installed, which don't look like I have the head screwed on there, right? So yeah, so that's gonna be the next step, but we will hold off on that until later. So now with the rear axle, here. I'm going to go ahead and put the links on, uppers and lowers, um, attach the drive shaft to the chassis, and then we'll be right back to speaking. Alright, so I tried a little different here. What I did was I went ahead and I put the links onto the axle first, and then we'll slam them into the chassis and see if that's a little bit easier. So we're going to start with Figuring out, well, that's gonna be fairly easy, luckily. So now, what I like to do is try to spin the front. That's too big, you get a 1.5 and stick it in the hole and spin it to where it's facing straight up. Makes life a lot easier. Okay, well after scratching my head, turns out that I put the links in the wrong spots. <laughs> I went back through the instructions and verified I had everything where it was supposed to be, but it turns out that I jumped the gun as usual and put the lower or the upper links in the lower spots and vice versa. This is why it was not fitting in there. So we're going to do this one. Remember, it's kind of a pain to slide it in the hole because it's plastic and it's tight. Might could stretch it a little bit with some needle nose. It's all about the finesse, trying to slide it down in that hole. And then trying to line it all up. I'm probably just gonna run it down with a drill and see if I can get it to catch through that eyelet. And of course I used the wrong size screw. Or, no, it caught, that was right. Now the uppers, or I mean the lowers, go into the furthest part of the skin. Now 
All right, and again, just like on the front, you got the thicker side, so we're gonna be going from the back forwards with the shocks. All right, guys, and just like that, we've got all the links on, drive shafts connected, axles connected, and we are good to go. Mm -hmm.